Josh Will Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Prime Randy Orton was a menace by none other than Wrestling Gifts. We just checked out Randy Orton's most savage moments. If you hadn't checked that video out, go check it out. Definitely enjoyable. So I know he's gonna have some of the footage from his most savage moments in there. This should be a good one. Randy Orton was definitely a menace to all of WWE uh, and his run as a heel especially when he was just in the mode of putting people into oblivion i love saying that because that's what he was doing definitely with some of randy orton's best work we're gonna check this out appreciate all love and support let's get right into this bad boy and it's the society randy orton was in his prime yo randy orton in his prime in the 2000s was more than a heel he was more than bad he was more than just a villain he was straight up mental he was a yep. psychopath he was a savage randy's character was straight up insane and it was legendary it randy was great. At first just started off as a regular blue chair prospect and you would have never ever expected that this kid right here this kid right here would From end jeans. up becoming the menace that he ended up becoming yo at first he was just a young kid in evolution doing the dirty work and helping Triple H bury the Raw roster one step at a time. But eventually, <laughs> he was doing some of the most insane things we've ever seen in wrestling. It all started when he was 23 years old. Randy Orton became the legend killer, and this man would just simply go around and beat up legends. These poor Which was old men who could gimmick. barely move half good. the time, broken hips and bones, you Yo, name it. It, was, it, it didn't was matter. Good. He would RKO these men. Good character development. I love the legend killer Randy Orton was fantastic. He would kick them downstairs, spit in their face, and oh my bad, it wasn't even just men. Even 80-year-old fabulous Moolah caught it. But, I mean, she did kind of deserve it. But nah, Randy was a young savage, but after the insane match with Foley and winning the world title, he slowly actually became a face, a good guy. The fans wanted to cheer him, especially up against Triple H, and the plans were he was going to be the future of Raw. His legend killer days were gone. He was going to be good guy Randy Orton, mm -hmm. carrying the Raw brand, being the future of the WWE. Yeah, he was going to be good guy Randy Orton. But the issue was, uh, does this look like a good guy to you? Mm. Randy in 04 and 05 just gave off the biggest douchebag vibes you could possibly imagine. He didn't know how to act like a face. It was awkward. It was weird. So they just went all in with this villain yep. character. We thought Randy was going crazy before. Wow, he's beating up legends. Cool. Nah, nah. After this, it was GG. Nobody was safe. Everyone was catching it, including his girlfriend. So he had a girlfriend in early 05, the sexy Stacey Keebler. But nah, she was too much of a distraction. So what does he do? Middle of the ring. Kiss and RKO. Be gone, <laughs> oh thought. Leave God. me alone. I'm Be gone, thought. Imagine that's how you break up with your girlfriend. Sit her with a kiss and then hit her ass with an RKO. <laughs> I'm a man of God. Hey, Jake the Snake looked at him weird. Doesn't matter. RKO. But yep. it was the Undertaker feud that drove him to insanity. It mm -hmm. was this feud right here that made Randy into the monster that we all know him as. So Randy couldn't beat the Undertaker at WrestleMania, right? Boo hoo. It's fine, Randy. It's all good. Nah. Nah, Randy doesn't go down like that. So what does Randy do in the months after that? All right, so first, let me interfere and cost you a WWE title match, okay? Let me put a dummy that looks like you in a casket to trip you out. But you know what? That's not enough. Let me actually put you in the casket and then mm -hmm. set it on fire. And then basically dance on your grave. Randy lost one match at WrestleMania to The Undertaker, and he made he his personal tried vendetta to, kill him. to smoke on The Undertaker pack. And when he got <laughs> it, that pack was... Not smoke on The Undertaker. I've never heard someone... Bro, we smoking on that Undertaker pack because not many people were smoking on that pack. That's wow, wild. Bro, okay, Undertaker, you're going to keep coming back from the dead. It's fine. No worries. What does this man do? On the Eddie Guerrero SmackDown tribute episode, they have Eddie Guerrero's lowrider out there to pay respect to Eddie. What this psychopath? He takes the Undertaker, places him on the back of the lowrider, and yes, Eddie had just died a few days before this. He gets in the lowrider and reverses that thing mm, back I into the SmackDown that segment. stage, causing the Undertaker and the car to blow up. And that wasn't the last time poor Eddie Guerrero was getting clapped in his grave. A few months later, after yep. Eddie's best friend Rey Mysterio won the Royal Rumble, Rey won it for Eddie. He pulled off a miracle. What does Randy say to Rey in the middle of the ring while Rey is looking to the heavens looking at Eddie? Eddie's down there in hell! Such a savage moment. This man had officially lost it. And how he can we rogue. forget about the tag team of Rated RKO? This was a tag team match made in hell. You take yep. Edge, that slimy, disgusting piece of shit. And Rated RKO was so 
good. They, oh my god, it was their feud with DX, legendary, rated RKO was so good. Then you take Randy Orton, the man with no morals, no respect, and together they were straight up animals. But after all those shenanigans in 04, 05, 06, 07 was the year where Randy Orton changed once again, and this mm -hmm. time he went from the legend killer. To the Viper. And no, no, don't worry, it's fine. He still killed legends. You know, he beat up Sergeant Slaughter, Jerry the King Lawler, you know, casually slapped Cody Rhodes' dad in front of him, yep. and then proceeded to beat his ass on pay per view. Don't worry, he still did that. But when he became the Viper, that's when he introduced a new finisher to his arsenal. And ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the most vicious finishers of all time. This yep. was a move that every single kid who was watching at the time wanted to do so bad, but they were always scared that they were probably gonna kill their friend if they did it. This was the move that simply meant lights out. There was no kick kicking out of this the punt yep the punt randy kick. orton's punt kick was on another level this move was actually scary okay when he used to hit someone with this you thought they were dead bro what a move normal wrestlers had like normal moves right like standard wrestling moves randy was like nah i'm gonna just start kicking mother canuckers in the head what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> yep. once randy started doing the punt he started doing things that were just straight up evil first he was feeding with john cena right this man handcuffed cena to the ropes and then spent like 10 minutes just casually beating up john cena's dad in yep. the middle of the ring this 50 60 year old man just casually getting his ass kicked while his son watches and it didn't stop there no 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 yeah when he kicked his dad in the head bro i was like oh my god this nigga must be stopped oh my god this sicko randy is he is a menace he is a rogue son of a you know what Another episode oh of Raw, Randy my. Orton just grabbed Cena's dad from the crowd, threw him over, and just boom, punted him in the head. Like, yo, Edge slapped Cena's dad, and we were all like, oh my god, how could he do that? That's so disrespectful. Randy was like, yo, he I'm gonna send this man him. to heaven. Randy got the <laughs> WWE Championship in late 07, and he dominated, okay? Remember when ISIS was running that one summer? Well, Randy Orton was basically running the winter of 07 and the spring of 08. Yo, Triple H, light work. He clapped him so hard, he was bleeding so much that you think he needed a blood transfusion. A feud with Jeff Hardy? Well, when he's in the ring, let me just take his brother and hold him hostage backstage and mm -hmm. punch him. Fam, at this point, Randy Orton basically was a terrorist. Yo, Randy had a match with John Cena at No Way Out 2008, and this annoyed me so much. So they were both in the middle of the ring. They had been wrestling for like 15 minutes. It was a solid match. And it's like, okay, they're face to face. It's about to go down. Randy is going to get beat up. Cena's going to take back his championship. And you're ready. You're anticipating and you're hyped. But Randy slaps the referee. <laughs> and everyone's like, wait, what? what? Why did he slap the referee? What happened? <laughs> but then the referee disqualifies Randy Orton. And Randy just runs away. <laughs> I'm sorry. But... <laughs> Y'all can't tell me that ain't funny. He just uh, uh, ring the bell. He's just <laughs> He just I forgot he did that. He slapped that way. Champions advantage. Man, I retain the title. I can slap the referee. What you gonna do about it? With the title. This man purposely got himself disqualified in a championship match to stay champion on a pay-per-view. But yeah, man, all those things were wild. All those shenanigans and moments that were insane. Randy Orton finally reached his final form, his peak of being a menace, when he shaved his head. And I said this in my video. Y'all can go back and check it if you haven't seen it. Bald Randy Orton was the, he was the ultimate form of Randy Orton's Rogueness. His evil persona does not happen until he shaves his head. Fantastic. And I don't know what kind of razor this man was doing. I don't know what kind of deadly skin fade he was getting, but he got his head shaved. He grabbed Cody Rhodes. He grabbed Ted DiBiase Jr. He created legacy and he went after the McMahons. I'm telling you, man, this was Super Saiyan Randy Orton right here. So his feud with the McMahons starts off pretty chill at first, okay? He's with Stephanie. He's insulting her. And every week he just goes above and beyond. But slowly it becomes him straight up tormenting Steph. He eventually mm -hmm. is like, oh, you're useless. You're this, you're that. In one episode of Raw, it was Vince and Steph in the ring and he just straight up says that hey now that you popped out some grandkids you're essentially worthless yo at that point already we're like whoa that's pretty wild that's pretty wild but nah this was just the beginning yep. after that he just goes off the rails he goes off the rails in a level that we have never seen before so he slaps Vince McMahon yep. and then he punts him he punts this 64 year old man the owner of the company punts him in the middle of the ring so then Steph who's all like scared like oh my god you beat up my dad she brings back Shane McMahon who mm -hmm. hadn't wrestled in a few years 
years. So she brings Shane, and everyone's like, yay, Shane's gonna beat up Randy. And what does Randy do? Well, he beats his ass too. He yep. leaves Shane a mess in the ring. So then Steph comes out, because she's like the last hope. What happens? Boom, RKO. RKO. So oh this my. man hunted the dad, then he killed the brother, and then he RKO'd the sister. Hey yo, somebody get Linda out here. So at this point, the whole family has been abused, and there's only one man left. There's only one man Triple left H. to save the day. The son-in-law, Triple H, comes out to save the family. Such a good feud. Oh my god, this feud was so fun. Oh, this was so fun. Name to save the family's honor. So Triple H he and tried Stephanie to kill him. marriage for the first time is being acknowledged on TV. So now Triple H is in the picture. And ladies and gentlemen, this is it. We get the most iconic Randy Orton moments ever. So yo, Randy had destroyed the McMahon family. He had done it all. But then on one night, it was Legacy versus Triple H in a handicap match. Before they had their match at Mania, they had a handicap match. And man, Randy Orton must be one wild guy at home because apparently this man loves the handcuffs. handcuffs. So they yeah. take Triple H and they handcuff him to the ropes and he says that there's only one person who can save you now and she better hurry so Orton grabs a sledgehammer and he is about to wild out but Stephanie McMahon she runs out there she's crying she's running and she begs them to stop just pleading and begging and Randy Orton at his peak in his prime at his absolute best so he good. grabs her with Triple H handcuffed and begging oh. him to stop having to watch this Oh, DDT yeah. right then and there. Yo, Steph is laid out and Triple H is freaking out. Triple H is going insane. And you think it's over. You think it's done. Like, wow, they really did it. You know, they DDT'd Stephanie McMahon. Wow, what a great storyline. It's done. But nah, we were just beginning because Triple H is about to cry, okay? He is tripping. He's about to cry. But Randy is smiling. So he gets a sledgehammer and he's about to do this. He's about to catch a body. But he puts it down. He's like, you know what? I got a better idea. So a Triple H with tears in his eyes, handcuffed to the ring, he is forced to watch this. He is forced to watch one of the most iconic Raw moments in history, in my opinion. Something that had the entire playground going crazy the next day. Randy Orton smiling, looking at Triple H, kisses Stephanie McMahon. Fam, this was insane. This was one of those things that felt surreal. Like, how was- Watching this, I was just like, yo. He's going to kill him. I was so excited for their WrestleMania match. Did not live up to the hype. That should have been a no rules, no DQ, anything goes. Uh, it should have been, it should, yo, we should have saw blood. That, oh my God, that match was, it was, the match did not come close to the buildup. But my God, this buildup was great. Oh, how is this man. happening? How was how is this possible? This was in the PG era. This was 2009, but it felt so surreal. And then Randy just grabs a sledgehammer and boom, bangs in Triple H and walks away, just leaving Triple H and his wife just lying there. And as the year went on, whether he won or lost, it didn't matter. 09 was a year where he was in his yeah. final form, where he wasn't even a wrestler anymore. At this point, he was just there to wild out, yeah. destroy families, and end careers. Look no further than the stuff that he did to John Cena in 2009. Back in 07, like we mentioned, he already beat up his dad and destroyed him, R killed him, all that stuff. But that, that wasn't enough. No, no, no. That was not enough. In 09, he was the ultimate supervillain, so we had to step it up. So in an I Quit match against John Cena at Breaking Point 2009, wait, first of all, this wasn't even a match. My Bad. this wasn't even a fight either this was something that honestly you probably isn't even allowed on youtube yo randy <laughs> beat cena's ass for a solid 25 minutes before yeah. you know super cena's powers kicked in but yeah. he pulled out the handcuffs once again and he cuffed him and he just started clapping him he beat cena's ass so bad that honestly it was kind of disturbing yo he knocked him out and he was dragging his body like he was playing a hitman but yeah this man tied up cena to the post and he tortured him he yep. actually tortured him he would have waterboarded him if he could have he got the kendo sticks and he started just wild now he was like mm -hmm. a man possessed of chair shots that candles and yo trust me i have never heard john cena cry like that like he did in this match but how could we forget bragging rights 2009 after destroying families beating up dads and destroying legends you know he had to take it to the next level what was the next big thing he could do uh, how about murdering someone? It was Cena versus Randy in an Iron Man match for one hour. It was one hour of Randy Orton just being a straight up menace. So they're fighting and Randy slams John Cena's head into the pyro control thingy and the pyro went off. And yo, I swear to God, Randy looked like a caveman who had just discovered fire for the first mm -hmm. time. So I first he grabs this. John Cena and just throws him into the lights trying to blow him up with the lights. But that, that wasn't enough. You know what? It didn't do enough damage. He needed more fire, more sparks. It wasn't enough. 
And it's like, yo, why stop there? Randy really wanted to be on the FBI's most wanted list. So <laughs> Cena is literally crawling away for his life. He is trying to crawl away from this monster. He's trying to get away and he ends up on the stage. So Randy sees that Cena is on the stage and he yeah. goes to the pyro control thingy once again. And this monster is spamming the buns like a kid playing Nintendo for the first time. He is just button mashing like his life depends on it. And the fireworks Bro, just go off. Him. He thought Kane was going to come out and pew, pew, pew. Randy Orton tried blowing up John Cena. He with was, fireworks in front of 20,000 really, people. He was really trying to kill uh, people, uh, bro. Officer, yeah, yeah, this sir, this guy right here. Nah, man, it's crazy. Just look at him in 2002. This guy right here, look at his face. Somehow, some way, this kid who looks like the most average 2002 American Eagle model you could possibly imagine went on to become a super villain for <coughs> the ages. Ladies and gentlemen, without a doubt, I present to you a bona fide, certified menace to society Randy Orton. No doubt about it, bro. <laughs> wow. No doubt about After it. After this, Randy Orton's career went on and he did his thing, okay? Every now and then he would tweak and do something crazy such as burning down houses, destroying earlobes, cashing yeah. in on Daniel Bryan. But man, this run right here from 2004 until 2009, this was unprecedented. Randy pushed the limits of what a heel was, okay? Yep. They did everything yep. and anything they could possibly think of a Randy Orton to do. Yo, I'm gonna be honest, we will never ever see a character go to that level ever again. Randy Orton did it all and I am so happy that I grew up in this this era that I was able to watch prime Randy Orton at his absolute best just cause mayhem and destruction and be the biggest savage you could possibly imagine. Randy Orton in his prime is like a top three heel. I don't care what anyone says. As a heel, as the man doing horrible, vicious things, Randy Orton in his prime, top three all time. I don't care. Yo, in the comments below, leave your favorite Randy Orton savage moments, whether it's a quote, a match, anything, it doesn't matter. Let's give prime Randy Orton some of his flowers. Thank you guys so much for watching this video video i had a lot of fun making it and reminiscing and just thinking about all the crazy stuff that randy Orton's character used to do yo i said it in my most savage moments reaction randy orton is a goat goaded already goaded gave him his flowers once again i gotta give him some more flowers bro i have to agree with wrestling gifts here bro he is easily one of the best heels ever in WWE I'm being so serious he was pushing the envelope when it comes to PG ratings he like PG era he was pushing it like the dude was doing some really sick stuff when you think about it I'm sorry man you DDT someone's wife and then you seal it with a kiss you gotta die and that's why Triple H came up to that man's house and tried to kill him I love it this is great man but Randy Orton, bald-headed Randy Orton, was the most vicious version of him, and I love it. And I like when he's able to tap into that version of him every now and then. Is he? He's great. He's fantastic, bro. One of the best heels to ever do it. Probably be one of the best heels to, you know, like when you really list the greatest heels of all time, you gotta put him in that list. You have to. That's why I'm glad I was able to see the evil episode because he is the embodiment of pure evil. But comment down below. Let me know. What do you rank Randy Orton on the all-time rogue scale, the all-time evil scale, heel scale, menace scale, whatever you want to say? What do you rank him? Do you give him top five, top ten? Or do you give him top three? Or do you rank him as the best heel to ever wrestle in WWE? Let me know. I want to get y'all thoughts and opinions. Where y'all rank him on the heel scale? Because he is, for me personally, if I really, really had to think about it, he's definitely top five. As one of the best heels ever, from the wrestling that I watched, he's, he's top five. He, you gotta give him top five. If not top five, it easily top ten. There's no dying, denying it. He's easily top ten. If you don't want to give him top five, top ten at least. Dude, this, you gotta give him his credit, bro. He made you just, like, really disturbed. And I loved it. So, but appreciate all the love and support. Road to 80K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.